was on the USS Frank Cable. We're doing maintenance on the boiler. The boiler was damaged, had some things go wrong with it, and we raised the pressure inside of it, and it ended up exploding. All the water that was still liquid instantly flashes into steam and takes up, you know, 10 times the space, twice as fast. From the time we heard the boiler explode to the time I was off the and the end of the back of the ship was 45 seconds. As we were evacuating the space, we were getting burned by steam that was you know, well over 1,200 degrees. One of the blessings of it was it, it burned so deep so fast you didn't really have the pain of being burned. You know, it was just kind of instant. All six of us made it to Brook Army Medical Center. Two ended up passing away. I was, uh, I was burned 48% of my body, third degree burns. My skin wasn't damaged immediately the first couple of months I was hurt. Like, it, it sloughed off, but I'd kind of still look like me. He was fine, you know, he, did, he looked great. You know, so I was like relieved. I said, oh, he's still fine, he's still good, you know? And they said, no, Miss Lammy said, he got steam burns. It's like dipping a strawberry in a, in a pot of boiling water. As soon as you pull it out, it still looks like a strawberry. But if you leave it on the counter, eventually you'll, it'll start to erode from inside. All right, so I actually had to watch my face break down over time. And the scarring just got worse and worse and worse and worse. And then like the skin would come off and it was just like these huge thick scars on my face. So they went in to remove all that. And that created another scar, which like just continued to pull my face down, pull my face down. So it's a very long and torturous process, I think. But I lost strength in my hands. I couldn't, I couldn't pick anything up. I couldn't even open the door to pull it open, like the door to the hotel room. I couldn't open it up because just grabbing the handle would make blisters all over my hands and stuff like that. Sitting in the room and I was thirsty and my daughter was there, she's two at the time, Mackenzie, and I was like, hey, can you get daddy a drink, right? And so she walked over to the table and she got the Gatorade and she opened it up, put the straw in there and she like held it for me to drink. And she's only two, so I was like, only a year ago, I'm holding her bottle, like feeding her, right? And so that's when it hit me like, wow, this is a lot worse than I anticipated. How it was presented to me was uh, Aaron Mankin had came back to BAMS and he was talking about the surgeries and stuff that he'd had and he looked really good compared to what he'd been through before. And my neck was like really like roped down with scars and everything like that. My face was pulling down. A very restricted range of motion in my face and everything. It was just, I had get like headaches from my neck cramping up and stuff all the time. So when I went in there to talk to Dr. Miller, I was expecting him to say the same thing that all the doctors at Bamsey were saying was they were gonna have to go in there and remove all the skin off my neck again. And you know, there's not a very high success rate with that because I don't have a lot of good skin that they could put back on. But when I sat down in front of the camera and Dr. Miller said that he looks like a great candidate for Z-plasties. Right. I've had a few Z-plasties before that heal really quick. Not a lot of pain, not, no skin grafts. So I was like, oh, it looks like I'm going to California. Right? So, <laughs> uh, one of the major surgeries I had at Bamsey, that you've replaced my whole face. And so what Dr. Miller has been working on is kind of breaking that up over the years and allowing my face to kind of settle down, and let the scars go back. I've had a ton of Z-plasties on my neck and face. He's also done skin grafts to release my eyes on both sides and both sides of my nose to kind of separate my scar. I look a lot better now than I did before I came here, so okay. I feel a lot better too. It's, a, it's almost like a total package deal. This buddy family system that comes in and supports your family while you're being taken care of by the hospital. They take the dynamics of your family, match it up with the dynamics of a buddy family so that everybody has a, a mate, basically, somebody to talk to, somebody to go with. When we first met our buddy families, it's kind of like a shocker a bit that people from totally different worlds can really understand us and get to know us at a personal level. They've taken us out to countless places, keep our kids entertained, keep everybody happy. They go shopping or doing whatever, all the stuff I don't want to do. <laughs> it's a very family-oriented place, that's what I like about it. I think it's been great about having Dr. Joe here is you can sit down with her in a room and you don't feel uh, alienated by any source. You know, you just, you can come in here, you can speak freely. She helps navigate all the different problems that, you know, can happen in a wounded warrior house. You know, so. I mean, it's hard raising kids. It's really hard raising kids with PTSD. We're over here, it's, 
hey, we want to talk to your wife or we want to bring the kids in and see how they're doing, you know, and it makes the kids feel important. Now they're not just, you know, nobody. Now they're part of the, the family and they can communicate and do all this stuff. Having our family meetings with Dr. Joe is really uh, helpful because she really kind of gives us a different outlook on our emotions and how we feel about things. And Joe patches us together, I guess. She just makes sense of everything. If it hasn't been for Operation Men, I don't think I'd be in the position that I'm in today. Like the, all the things that they've provided, not just me, but my family in general is amazing.